This is flow. Uh, this is going to be our workflow segment. Uh, I have my friend Franklin Lay here. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, he's going to show us how he makes these cute little GIFs on Procreate for the iPad. If you're not familiar with Procreate, it's this really cheap app that gives you amazing tools to make some killer, killer digital stuff. Uh, Frank, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. Hi, um, I'm Franklin. Uh, I've been working as a digital artist for about 10 years, and I'm currently working at a gaming company as a mobile gaming artist. And uh, I've discovered Procreate to sort of take my work on the go. It's been really fun just creating pieces, especially when I'm on the bus commuting to and from work, which I sorely miss. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's been such a long time since I've taken the bus. Uh, yeah, I, I like to sketch people on the bus. I like to, like, the great thing about sketching on an iPad and with Procreate is you're able to create something right then and there. Uh, it, I, and then latest, Procreate 5, they updated with the animation feature. And I've been playing around with that and I discovered some little tips and tricks to kind of help speed up the workflow. Uh, a little disclaimer, I'm not too much of an animator and, but Procreate 5 has really encouraged me to explore animating, and I've been creating fun little um, little GIFs and uh, loops for Instagram, and I'd like to share some of that with you guys. So obviously, let's start off with the uh, bus sketch, and you know, once in a while you hit a unicorn and you see <laughs> another person sketching on the bus. Of course, I have to like sketch this person down. <laughs> so I painted this person up. Uh, it took roughly about like 30 to 40 minutes to get a good base down and then I'll take it home to like animate it out. So let's play this animation real quick. So you can see, you know, I'm just <laughs> observing him, <laughs> observing someone else. Very meta, very inception. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. that, that's super funny. Uh, <laughs> It's always great to see another artist, like just seeing people in the wild, out in the field. But my typical bus <laughs> routine, I see people on their phones, which is totally fine, because like they're very unaware that they're modeling for me. <laughs> and it, it's been fun, and then just watching what they do. And I like to capture these little slice of life moments, and it's just really fun to like, it makes commuting really easy and really fast, right, so. What do you do when somebody catches you drawing them? Um, assert confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a lot of just like, you know, there's no shame. Like, I'm not, I'm not taking creepy pictures, I'm drawing. Um, sure. And it's just, it, sometimes people come over and they want to check it out. It's kind of cool. They're All just right. like, wow, this is cool. And then I actually do, you know, talk a little bit. I do meet strangers and it's really cool to strike up a conversation with them on the bus too. So, yeah, just like, here's some of, uh, my non-bus animation and sketches. I like to like paint up little illustrations and just add a little bit of ambiance just to give it a, a tiny bit of life. So it's, it's a lot of like really fun, just things to explore. And what I've noticed through just animating on Procreate, there are some limitations, there are some certain things that you kind of have to do to like explore out the whole function. It's very rudimentary right now, but it's been, it's been a, the limitations that it has, it has challenges to like, it really pushes you to like utilize the tools even more as much as possible. Awesome. And obviously animation takes time. So the amount of hours I spent into it equals seconds to show. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's one thing about animation. Um, and I've really enjoyed it so far and just, I'm, I'm a painter at heart, but anytime I see like professional animators bring to life like any of my creations or yeah they just seem like magicians to me and I'm like man I just want to you know steal a little bit of that yeah, magic man. and just to see like how, I how mean, they do it. I love this frog so much. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Especially with the rocks bouncing there like. <laughs> yeah the little bounce the little extra bounce on the rock. Yeah yeah dude it's just it's a nice little little touch. <laughs> oh. I mean, this frog was really fun. And then um, there's this sketch daily thing that I did of uh, Darkwing Duck. Dude, and classic. Very classic. Classic. <laughs> yeah. You know, striking, did a little crossover with uh, Batman. Yeah. 
the animated series. Yeah, that's awesome. Childhood favorite. Oh, dude, I miss Darkwing. <sighs> Throwback. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I love Boba, so like, why not animate some Boba? It's oh, really. What? <laughs> <laughs> this one was like more of my ambitious ones, where I'm trying to think of like, okay, maybe there's a story element to it. You know, when you're you're drinking boba, sometimes you're not paying attention. You're just trying to like catch that straw, but it's very elusive. So, <laughs> and these these are little fun loops that um, I just enjoy creating and painting. And I also oh, like you know a little bit of my past. Like I do a little bit Dragon Boat back then, and then like just this is a fun callback moment to like. Back in my paddling days. Yeah, you're you're a dragon boater. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And a lot of shout out to all the San Francisco dragon boat teams. Yeah. San Francisco local. Yeah. Born and local. raised, right? Yep, yep, Sick. yep. And um, and I do a lot of like painting outdoors in San Francisco. So, mm -hmm. so for the locals, you probably recognize this place, uh, Lands End over at Sutra's Bath. And I do oil painting outdoors, mm -hmm. no plein air painting but I like to do a little study afterwards on the iPad just to like, just get a little refresher and relive that day and capture that moment with some like animation. That's awesome. And just, it just creates Your like so much in the more. water there were, that's Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of tips and tricks on that too with uh, liquefying in Procreate. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I can't wait to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing right here with uh, a little bit of like, a little of that wind and mm -hmm. gust feeling. Wow. And then there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit like frame by frame action, but then a lot of it is just like duplicating and just pulling pieces back and forth. Sweet. So it's really cool to like, just explore like different functionality because mainly Procreate is a painting tool mm -hmm. and you have like, it's almost like Photoshop light, but I prefer it more than Photoshop right now. Yeah. Just because you could take it on the go. Yeah, I mean, accessibility is key. Yeah, so uh, we get started yeah. and, uh, and... Guys, if you have any questions or anything, please type into the chat. This is what I'm here for. Um, yes. Rob, the moderator. Yeah. So while, while I'm like, I can't multitask that well, so <laughs> no, he's no, going to no. help me filter through it's different Two different things. sides of the brain, so... Yeah. Please, please, ask all the questions. Yeah, so let, let's, first of all, let's explore how how to get started in Procreate to get into the animation function. So let's say I just came back from camping and uh, I felt like animating a little fiery campfire right here, sort of semi-inspired by Calcifer from uh, How's Moving Castle, right? A uh, little jiggly shout out right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the first thing I do is I sketch up a little campfire and uh, you can work in layers in Procreate, so that's that's one of the most powerful things in Procreate. Now, to function, like to get access to animation, you go to this little gear icon up there, and there's this little thing called Animation Assist. Uh, once you turn that on, mm -hmm. you, you have a little timeline up here. Now, the cool thing about this timeline is there are certain things you can do in here within the timeline. Uh, all that is shown through settings. And you could adjust frames per second. Uh, let's turn off onion skin for now. But for the people who are more savvy, uh, Wait, this is where onion you- skin? Onion skin is, uh, <laughs> is a term in, uh, to like show your future layers back and forth. So then like when you're oh, animating between frames, like it's kind of, yeah, so you, it's an onion skinning <laughs> is a term that they used for uh, just seeing like back and forth. So, like when you're turning the page, like as the old masters would do. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, you have a layer like before and after, and you can kind of adjust the range of the onion skin too, like to like have like one uh, before and after or Got like it. two and right. so forth. Cool, I learned <laughs> today. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, there's, there's some things that you can do with, um, let's say like, we could add like a little happy face. And then there's a the cool thing you can do for animating this is when you're doing certain elements, you have a background and you have a foreground element that you could turn on. 
and then you have everything in between. So kind of everything in between is the stuff that you're animating. Mm -hmm. And the background and foreground, you kind of like have that layer and lock in. So the, there, there are many ways to utilize the background and foreground. Um, the foreground element, so I could have that as where my guides are to like sort of just like figure out a path of like how I'm going to animate the fire, like how it's going to move. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still learning VFX, so this is something that I'm really interested in. And I'm trying to figure out, uh, a lot of times I look online for references and resources to like right. figure out how to exactly do other people do this. Yes. And Anytime I'm approaching painting or animation, I always look up for references. Yeah, always look at a reference. Yeah, uh, I could do it from my head, it'll just come out crappy, that's, that's it. No, I'm sure it's yeah. not gonna come out crappy, <laughs> this guy's... <laughs> but yeah, it's too humble. <laughs> as, as an amateur animator, okay. I definitely okay. need to All look right. at references. Um, <laughs> I, d I did this one real quick, and um, yeah, definitely when you have the timeline available right here, you can actually add like frame by frame by frame. So each frame is kind of like a new frame that you could draw on to like re continue creating the animation that you want. Can you move your hand just yeah. a little? Yeah. There you go. I'll just choke up on the pen. There we go. So, you know, you could draw the next frame. And since I don't have my reference with me, I'm just making stuff up right now. But good thing is I already had this flame pre-drawn with the sketch. So a good thing is you can scrub through by dragging the little timeline on the bottom ah. to see. And uh, what I learned uh, from all the friends and other animators that have taught me and gave me tips mm -hmm. is uh, animation is kind of like a patient sort of like process where you have to go back and forth. It's a lot of finding and fixing, trial and error. And fine tuning. Yeah, a lot of fine tuning. And it's not per frame by frame, but it's the, the motion of it mm. that makes it feel. Like if anything feels off, you have to play it through to like find out, okay, what's popping? What's like, what's like snapping too fast or so forth. And it takes a long time. Now let's... So as you can see, like when you're creating frames over here, you can actually see the frames get added and it gets added here on, onto your layers panel. So let's delete those. I'm gonna bring up all the frames that I did earlier. And yeah, let's say this is my, my little animation right now. Mm -hmm delete that real quick so this yeah. is a little looping fire campfire very happy that's cute yeah and uh, the next thing is you want to start coloring it of course uh, but then like of course uh, with this one this is a really rough animation you want to fine-tune it until it feels smooth you know, until what your preference is I do. I do have a question from Justin. Um, yeah. He's asking if you use the for the background and foreground as layers, just as guides, and then do you turn turn those off for the final animation? Yeah, definitely. So like yep. the background and foreground are great guides for, especially when you're trying to figure out. Okay, I could just choose a random, really bright color, like if I had a a ball in the center, and what I learned is, you know, you can find out your pathing of things and then it'll, it'll stay persistent throughout like all the, all the frames. So that's the cool thing about that. Uh, I use that a lot in like a path of an ember or like maybe how this little like spark flies off and you just add a little bit of pathing and any, Definitely turn it off the layer in your final animation or else it's gonna just stay on top. Mm. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Justin, for the question. Yeah. Now next. Um, also, can somebody let somebody in? Thank you. Oh yeah, sorry. No problem. Uh, so 
this is right now a very crude animation. And uh, let's say I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied. It's as smooth as I'm gonna get it. Because, uh, you know, at a certain point, you're gonna just keep working at it, working at it until it's perfect. And it's never gonna be perfect. But for the sake of demoing purposes, let's just move forward. <laughs> and we could just start on. <laughs> Yeah, start coloring. Yeah. So now one thing is there are different ways to sort of color and then I'll show you all these various methods. Justin said, Justin said thank you. Yeah, no problem, Justin. Um, another great thing about uh, foreground is when you're coloring. So I'll use it as a guide to put in my, my color swatches. Uh, and usually I, I just use with the hard brush. Let's do that. So. I have I made a group. Uh, that's one thing that how a frame operates is if it's within a group, mm -hmm. it counts as a frame. If it's just like a layer outside a group, it counts as a frame. Wait, and so you don't even have, so each frame. So if you just group something, then it'll just automatically go into a frame. Yeah, automatically you Same. consolidate everything into awesome. a frame. Awesome. So what I use that as is like all my guides could be within one group and I could just turn it on and off. So let's say, you know, a fire. It just have that brighter. These are some of the fire colors when it's burning bright. Now this is my, my guide layer. So let me show that real quick. It's gonna stay persistent on top. So then that go is color pick from there. Um, it's like having your palette when you're yeah, painting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like squeezing out the paints. Exactly. <laughs> without the mess. Yeah, without the mess, <laughs> easy cleanup. Don't have to worry about it. Now, a good thing is you could group it together. So you see that this is my first layer that I want to color. Uh, underneath it is a blank layer. Hmm. Then that means when I group those two layers together, it turns into a single frame again versus like before it was like two frames one blank frame and one you know your sketch oh got it so i group it together and it goes and into then, one frame yeah it goes into one frame uh i start coloring it in so like for for the sake of like you go like this and it's gonna turn down the opacity of your sketch just a little bit and then you know it's like a coloring book. Now you get to have a little fun. Nice. Just filling it in. <laughs> Come on. You know, to the best of your abilities. Uh, stay within the lines, I guess. Yeah, but you it's a little coloring demo. Sweet. Yeah, it's a quick, quick thing about Procreate. One th cool thing is like once you have that sort of encased, you can take that same color and you just drag it down and just fill it up. Boom. So makes things quick and easy. It's like a little tip to help you speed through your workflow, yep. which is flow, our little demo right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, same thing. Uh, what I also do is, another way I do coloring is I do onion skin. I turn it on for one frame, right? Mm -hmm. So I have that layer that I want to color for this particular one sketch. And uh, I add another frame underneath. So then it gives me a buffer. Cause like what's happening is I have onion skin within the range of one. So okay. this layer picks up one ahead and then the, another one behind, but I don't want to pick up that one. So I'm working in this one to start coloring. So this is just another method that I discovered that it might be faster and again, it's the same thing. I'm coloring, filling in the lines. Just dragging and dropping. Just a little amber part. Drag and drop over oh, there. It. Right? So yeah. that's a solid red color, which is essentially the same thing as this. Okay. But one other thing I do instead is I tap over here on the sketch, which I'm using as a guide. Okay. I do clipping mask. So it clips onto this frame right here. Now it's not can, in a group anymore. Can you explain uh, clipping masks? Yeah, so clipping masks are kind of like, 
when you take a cutout and then you just sort of like insert uh, another layer within it. So I want to do a quick demo of what a clipping mask can do. So anything that's indented, you see this little arrow, that means it's bound to the shape. Uh, so this particular shape has the like, um, properties of like, you know, anything that you color inside and outside will stay within that shape if you clip a layer into it. So for instance, if I have something yellow, I want to like start coloring in this frame right here. It's very convenient because like, what if you accidentally color outside, you're still maintaining the shape. There you go. Super well, super useful. For people that can't color in the lines. Yeah, yeah. Once you have that like perfect a... shape, right? <laughs> you don't want to like just destroy your shape. You kind of right? want to keep it. Nice. Yeah. Now, it's a solid tool. Super solid. I use it all the time. <laughs> I, I can't live without it. I was super happy when Procreate finally updated it with clipping mask. It didn't have it before. <laughs> it was torturous, but I still, you know, I, I still went through it. I was still loyal to Procreate to play around with it. <laughs> now, now that we, we discovered like two methods of coloring, mm -hmm. there are different ways on how the advantages and disadvantages they have. There is the one where when you're going in between frames and scrubbing back and forth, the, the thing about that is when we're working back and forth, that's, that's part of animating because you're looking at the motion because you're trying to capture that. Right. Uh, but the one good thing about the, um, the clipping mask method of coloring is that you get to work directly on the layer already. But if I scrub to that first one that I grouped, I'm trying to work on that, but I'm trying to color it orange, this thing pops up. Mm -hmm. And that interrupts my workflow. And I hate that. It's, it irks me when something interrupts my workflow. Absolutely. You're and it just, one yeah. Go ahead, you keep talking. So what happens is you kind of have to tap in, open the layer, and then work on, select the layer, and then work on that layer. Then you can start coloring in. Versus like if uh, with the clipping mask method, I tap over here, I can just directly start working right away without worrying anything about like, yeah, tapping through the layer panels, finding the layer that you had to color. So what really happens is when you do, you select the frame right here, the, the first layer of the frame is selected. Anything else above it to me is a guide. So this is where I actually start coloring. Now, another thing I can do is like, since I want to maintain the shape and then I don't want to accidentally color out of the shape, you can tap over here in alpha lock. So this shape now will stay locked and you can't color outside the shape. So it's very tedious, but I found out that this, this method is the way to like sort of go through everything and just you just go through a methodical method to color and uh, fill in all your sketches after you have that nice animated sketch. So right now I'm going to go through and just like fill in all the red. and clip it. I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Now we're just going through the tedious process of just like filling in everything. Oh, nice. It's always fun to like, it's kind of nice just to like, after you have a nice sketch, you could just think about you don't have to worry about it too much anymore. The coloring part is the most tedious part. The, the relaxing, the, right? Yeah, it's quite relaxing. And then you just, you're just making sure that everything is in order. Um, so I have some questions that maybe some people want to figure out is how do you deal with like, how do you, how do you personally deal with an artist block? 
Ooh, it's a classic a question, I know. Very but, classic question. I, but I like to figure out how everybody else, how everybody does it. So personally for me, like, it depends on like what kind of artist block. Let's say it's a personal one where I'm like, oh, I'm kind of blocked from just creating more personal work. I definitely step away from doing art for a second because like you might be creatively exhausted in, in the first place. Mm, the juice. Um, if, yeah. if it's at work, you kind of have to power through it. Like for me, <laughs> I, I worked on a cooking game for a long time. I had to draw a lot of food items and you could only draw so many potatoes and sausages <laughs> and pickles. Various ways, right? So it, it was a slog, but then you just find little things within work to make it interesting. And like, I didn't know about this sort of potato or that potato. Mm. And then you just find all these sorts of different potatoes. What's your favorite type of potato? Potato? Mm, probably Yukon. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And it's, it's, it's tough. Artist block is, is a real thing, but you definitely need to find balance between your life to just work through these slogs. Mm. And as a working commercial artist versus like my personal work, I treat my commercial art or the, the gaming field that I'm working in as a job. So it's a professional thing to do mm -hmm. to like be able to deliver quality uh, work for, for your studio. And, but for personal art, it's more of a personal journey and sort of um, a creative, like just a recharge from the slog that I usually go through at work. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been like, it's been fun. Like you get to explore, you're, you're creating for yourself. You don't yeah. have to like follow a prompt or like specific, like, yeah, specific potatoes or like <laughs> sausages. Yeah. Like I draw whatever the hell I want. You know, our man Justin has another question for you. Yeah. Um, so. He's wondering if this is the same process you used in all of the earlier examples, starting with the animated sketch or drawing and then painting, or in, in, in some of those examples, did you start painting first and then add the animate, animating elements afterwards? Yeah, um, I definitely go through back and forth. So I could show real quick, uh, for instance, the, the bus sketches, obviously I had to like sketch on location these people and just really capture them at the moment. And mm -hmm. I also think about how I'm capturing them. So what happens is I'm separating uh, background, which is like what we showed earlier with the background layer and uh, foreground elements too. And then in between I have my character. So I kind of separate with layers mm -hmm. on how, how I want to capture these things. In, in prep for animation in the future. Mm. Uh, another method is like, let's say I do like only had time and I only just made everything flat. Um, I duplicate some of these layers and just sort of just lasso out and cut out carefully, of course. But uh, yeah, cut out elements within my illustration that I do want to animate. So then I could bring it to that sort of like middle between background and foreground within okay. the animation timeline. Nice. Uh, at times, uh, since I'm learning how to animate even more, uh, I, I'm going through sketching. So like, I'm still beginning to learn how to animate things. So one great way to learn how to an animation, like learn these animation principles is to like practice animating with just lines. Uh, of course, sometimes you have certain things that you want to animate like rain or something quick. These are these are fairly simple to do that I didn't really have to think too much about. Mm -hmm. uh, if I turn off this layer right here, and then let's darken this real quick, you can kind of see I just animated this rain element. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And then it was, it was honestly very simple because it was just like three frames of like these raindrops. And when you play it fast enough, like at 12 frames per second, it sort of just gives that illusion of rain. All right. But I definitely, yeah, I was animating on top of the illustration I did. And you can see it's flat already right there. So hopefully that answers some questions right there. Sweet. Thanks for another question, Justin. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, this is why we're here again, guys. So just... anyway, feel free to ask anything. Um, it could be just about art or just even our careers or anything personal if you want. Yeah, yeah. 
just trying to help everybody out. Yeah. Um, I actually met Frank because we used to run a portrait night back when, you know, pre 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 pandemic. I yeah, guess that's the way right? to say it. Um, because there's no the practicing, right? Like, yeah. I think that's kind of training and practicing and drawing from real life and it's just kind of what we do yeah um, and then yeah as artists like i highly encourage drawing from life instead of just photographs because uh, on the photo there's so many things that you can't see when you see it from life mm -hmm. like there's this dimensionality to it but photo is kind of like when you look at a camera you're adjusting a lens or anything like that it kind of flattens things out it it blows out lights and um Versus like what you see with your naked eye is different from what you see from a photograph. Yep. Absolutely. And I've been I've been running portrait night for like a little bit and I'm attending these portrait nights. And I was fortunate enough to meet Rob who definitely had similar interest in wanting to like paint from life and sort of just create this little art community locally here in San Francisco, right? Yeah, man. Like <laughs> we just I providing whether it be classes, tools, these talks, just stuff to make to help artists or people that want to like go and pursue art and just help making everybody better, you know? Like really, really trying to cut the, um, what am I trying to say? Cut the time on like the things that we've learned that we've picked up. Yeah. A lot of there's a lot of trial and error for a lot of us. I know Frank's caught like you just take little id, uh, tidbits from different artists that we look up to and then you try to incorporate it in your own work. So if we can try to cut that down so we can help artists get better faster. Yeah, it's kind of work through know? those frustrations, right? Yeah, like, man. You, you definitely learn a lot through frustration, but what if you're stuck? And then, like, if you're stuck by yourself, it, it's very infuriating. It's you can't really island. do anything. <laughs> yeah, and art, sometimes of it is a very solitary pursuit. But mm -hmm. for me, like, I, I do like hanging out with other artists. A little bit about me is, like, I was a science major. I studied engineering. But I always liked doing art. And uh, it took a while for me to start making new art friends. And it was mm -hmm. really cool once I started making art friends. Because... It's an interest, a shared common interest that everybody has mm -hmm. that I could talk hours with you about. Oh, Talking dude. shop about art is <laughs> like one of the most favorite things for me. <laughs> All do. the time. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes, you yeah, know, my girlfriend gets kind of irritated. Like, oh, you're, you're still talking about art? Like, yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Just hang <laughs> on, on Zoom right now talking art. I'm like, well, that's what I love to do. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mikey would like to say thanks for being here. Oh, thanks, um, Mikey. Shabbat Shaboom. So this is very useful. You should offer more of these workshops. Oh, Perhaps yeah. Perhaps a workshop on portrait, mural designs, etc. would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, I'd love to hear about other artists, their workflows right? and stuff like that. Because, like, it gains a little insight on, like, what they're thinking, how they're creating these things. Absolutely. And it's especially, like... It's, it's just like revealing, you know that, that show where you're just like, oh, the magician's secret. You kind of just reveal a little bit of that magic. Yeah. And it seems approachable for people who want to like pursue art. Right. Because a lot of people just assume this is just, oh, you're so talented. Oh, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're Absolutely. born with it. But nah, no, practice. <laughs> it's a lot of practice. <laughs> it's all practice. Yeah. Uh, Mikey would like to know if you start from paper anymore or do you start on the pad now since you have access to that all the time? I actually have... I still have sketchbooks. Mm. Um, I still paint traditionally. So like, I still like that raw visceral feel of like sketching on paper yeah. or like painting with a brush with yeah. actual oil paint. And the stakes are just higher. So like you kind of turn on, right? Like yeah. that, that hard medium is, is, it's hard to replace that. Yeah. But the iPad really, the, the practice does translate really well. Obviously it can never replace, but getting concepts out if you're trying to like figure something out it really it's a really useful tool right yeah and that's what it is it's a tool so so yeah as a tool like you learn it in a different way because like the principles are still the same the things that you're doing is still the same it's just like you're learning the tool itself and uh 
When you're creating art, one great thing about being an artist, you get to experience different mediums if you want to explore outside your comfort zone, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. I've learned so much through just like tackling watercolor or going into gouache. But gouache. like my comfort zone <laughs> is still oil painting and digital painting. But once I started like tackling into those yeah. mediums, it's like I'm being a beginner all over again. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in that beginner mindset, you're more incentivized to grow and learn and actually have those frustrations Absolutely. again. Absolutely. And then you can reconnect with your community, mm -hmm. with those other experts. Like there are so many experts out there, professionals who are great at specific things and you get to like learn from them. Yep. And it really is humbling because like as, as an artist, my philosophy is always be hungry, always be a student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're complacent about where your art is, it kind of kills that creativity for yeah. me personally. I don't know about you, but like that's just one of those things that I'm like, as an artist, there's always something to learn. I'm yeah. always hungry to learn. Yeah, you're, you're never <laughs> yeah. always hungry, stay hungry. And it's me learning soon. animation. Yeah, and I'm yeah, just sharing totally. with you guys like what I discovered through learning how to animate because uh, I don't really animate at work. It, this is more of a hobby. It's fun to pick up an art hobby. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter like if you're great at it or not. It's just something to just do. And then uh, honestly, to me, art is just about creating and just like communicating through that and yep. just having fun with it. Absolutely. And of course, it could be a very powerful thing yeah. to like just express whatever you have to say through art, mm -hmm. be it a cute little flame or something like impactful, like an, an activism, like yeah. political totally. circles. Our Art voice. is a way to communicate through the barriers of different languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say it better than that. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Um, let's see. So we're coming up on, we have like, what, eight more minutes left? Yeah. So right, this is kind of like, like the workflow that we've gone through, right? So we got this little colored in flame. I'm asking, let me know. But yeah, go ahead. Keep right. going. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to do that little cooking show trick where uh, I had something in the oven. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this is something that I just worked on, same sketch, sort of just went through so the flame. So let's the finished product. Hey. Uh, it's not perfect, but it was something that was just really fun to like play around. Uh, obviously, you have like all these different layer modes that you can do, uh, a lot of things that you can go through. But um, yeah, so once again, just like, uh, was it Mikey who brought up like the padding thing or? Um, the, the, which padding thing? Oh, the, the guides, setting up the guides in the foreground. Um, that was Justin. Oh yeah, actually. Justin. Yeah, sorry, Justin. It was like, this is something that I did for the ember pads mm. where like you can kind of see it follows through the path that I created for them. A little guide right there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nifty. And then that, as soon as I turn it off, then it could just play through it actually, and it kind of wow, follows snakes through. Wow, wow, wow. So yeah, Amy also says that it looks so beautiful. So oh, thanks Amy. That was, yeah, you know, and it, it's just really it's satisfying. Like once you finish something mm -hmm. and it's moving and you can post <laughs> it on Instagram, whatever. But like for me, the, the personal satisfaction is just like I learned a little bit of something today, um, how to animate fire. Be it, It's not perfect, but it's a starting point for mm -hmm. me. And Absolutely. seeing like, you know, things those move. Middle school flames. You yeah, know, yeah. Those, those the, the classic. <laughs> and I just loved like I didn't get to do uh, make a campfire this time because you know it's fire season <laughs> for camping. So I just had to create a virtual flame for myself and I'm glad yeah, I'm get, glad get that sort of rules. camping experience. Yeah, California thanks you for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't need so. any help with that. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so what's like what your uh, what are your favorite brushes to use? Oh yeah, so I do have a bunch of brushes that I've created and also like shared throughout. You know, different artists, but uh, I have a sketching sort of brush that I call Scratchy Sketch. I think of it like a pencil that's kind of broken off the tip, and you kind of have that lead that's kind of like scratchy. Loose. Yeah, and loose. So let's let's create. Let's go through some brushes, and of course, all these brushes right now are available for free on my Instagram story. You can find it through Gumroad. Oh. So I think uh, uh, you guys will have a link. Uh, um. We we're, wasn't able to make the link, unfortunately. But, but if you find me on uh, Instagram, here. write it on. Let's see that. Let's see that pen. That art of lay. You can find me on Instagram over here. At art of lay. Yeah. I'll even type right here. At art of lay. There you go. 
And over there, you'll you'll see some of my animations, some work, but also brushes that I use on Procreate that you guys just get for free today. Which are amazing, by the way. Um, they're great. Um, <laughs> he's he's been creating brushes for a while now, and he's yeah. really honed down on it. Like yeah, there's there's just like certain styles that I'm like I really like the loose painterliness of like some of these sketches that I have and these brushes. But like the thing about these brushes is like there, there's a little bit of something for everyone. So that's the great thing. And I shared some of my favorite ones with people and yeah, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll find your little favorite brush and then you could just sort of tweak it however you like and just, yeah, it creates opportunities and new tools for you to explore and create new things. Oh yeah. Right? So yeah. like you found that like when you use what chalky sketch or bristly Dude, brush. There was chalky sketch and then yeah. there's like your oil paint brush, which I like I, I think that's still my favorite brush is the oil paint hard and soft. Yeah. Just because it feels really like I'm it, it feels like I'm kinda of painting to be honest with you. Yeah. So like it's chalky's a, good too though. Yeah chalky's good. <laughs> oil paint is good. actually something that I, I took from the Procreate like original brush and just tweaked it a little bit to suit my needs. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to like dig through and then go through like brush settings and just like sort of explore every single thing uh, if you have the time. I'm more of a tinkerer myself, so mm -hmm. I love just going through everything and seeing what it does. And it really just helps you learn the tools and utilize it to the best of your ability. Fantastic, too. hell yeah. yeah. Let's see, we have like three more minutes, so... So if there's any questions, any questions or, or anything... Just gonna chill for out for a little yeah. bit, because uh, it's been a long time since I uh, hung out with Rob in person. Oh, dude, I know, man. I do miss it's this guy really right nice, now. really <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> I miss it so much. Yeah, we still hang out on, on Zoom once in a while. Yeah, right? we so. do a little, it's I call it a create and kick it, where um, it's just artists come, we have a little Zoom thing, We kind of, everybody has a different project we're working on, and we kind of just hang back and just talk shop, ask each other, throw each other's work around, see, get some fresh eyes on it. Um, really encourage, and it's something that I've been actually actively working on to put your work out there. I know it's very personal, it's really hard for me, but ask for some feedback because that looks great. It's an awesome comment and we all love hearing it, but to me, the most valuable is critical feedback because we can always get better. Um, so yeah. Ask your artist peers, what do you think yeah. about this, you know? Uh, another thing I hang out over is at Warrior Painters. They have, a, they have a Discord that I hang out with. And then there's a lot of art Discords that you can hang out during this pandemic when you're feeling kind of lonely creating mm -hmm. art. Uh, totally. I've discovered Discord myself recently to like just hang out with other artists. Find, find these communities out there and it's very, they're very they're very friendly and they just want to just help out and hang out with everybody. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I'm constantly saying it's further together, you know? Yeah. Like really, it takes it takes a village. It's a, uh, takes a community. Yeah. Uh, but, Justin yeah. said the demo was great. Thanks so much. I'm glad. Thanks. Honestly. No, no, I'm hope. grateful for this opportunity just to share like whatever I kind of know, but it's been really fun just hanging out and just talking shop. Like, yeah, dude. Usual, it's, it's like, it was the best time for me is to talk shop about art and share what I do know, and then like hopefully it'll spark some interest for other people in the future to create more. Great. Yeah, thanks Hell a yeah. lot, man. Dude, thanks for being here, man. We really do appreciate it. Um, I'll see you on a Zoom call on Wednesday. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so <we laughs> yeah, I'll catch you over there. <laughs> All right, um, so you're good. Um, I'm gonna have, I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, so go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'll hop off and then.